For the last topic in Chapter 5, for the last video, I want to distinguish between public and private goods. So private goods are goods that sometimes will obey the conditions we learned about in the previous video for laissez-faire to be optimal. Not, not always, but sometimes. The public goods, I don't think they'll ever obey those conditions. So, I need to define the two characteristics which distinguish public goods from private goods. The first is whether the good is an exclusive good. That means, is it possible to prevent somebody else from consuming it? Let me go through these examples to give you a better idea of what we mean by exclusivity. So, first example is bread. Well, it's obviously possible for someone who owns bread to prevent somebody else from consuming it. You know, this is my bread. If I don't give it to you, then if you try to consume it, that's a crime. And so bread is an exclusive good. How about, let's say, groundwater in the 1700s? In the, in, I was thinking about North America. So here I claim this is not an exclusive good. If your neighbor in the 1700s built a, a dug a water well, there's really no, and, and tapped into an aquifer that goes underneath your property and his property. You don't have any way of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if, if you don't have any way of preventing him from pulling water out of that aquifer even if you also depend on that aquifer. So there's no way to prevent his access to that water. The reason I say groundwater in the 1700s is because now, in modern times, there is a way to, uh, to legally prevent somebody from tapping into a common aquifer if the laws are arranged uh, correctly. Next example, a private beach is exclusive. You can put a fence around the private beach and prevent anyone from entering unless they have your permission. Clean air is not exclusive. If the air is clean, you uh, in a city, you, uh, one person can't prevent another person, or the government can't prevent anybody else from breathing that clean air. So that's the first property of, uh, of the distinction between public goods and private goods is whether they're exclusive or not. Private goods are exclusive, like bread. And public goods are not exclusive, like clean air. The other distinguishing characteristic of public versus private goods is whether the goods are rival. That is, whether the quantity can be diminished. Now, for bread, you can certainly diminish the quantity of bread that's available just by eating a loaf of bread. So it's clear that bread is a rival good. Similarly, groundwater in the 1700s is rival because if you and your neighbor are pulling groundwater out of the same aquifer, then a gallon of water that he pulls out is a gallon of water that you can't pull out. You can't pull out the same gallon that he does. So it is a rival good. To some extent, the enjoyment of a private beach is not rival. If one family is already on the beach and you pay to get access to the beach, supposing that's a large enough beach, the presence of that one family doesn't take away, doesn't use up your ability to enjoy the private beach. In fact, depending on how large it is, it's possible for a large number of, how large the beach is, it's possible for a large number of people to be on the private beach and not use up the, pos the ability of the other people to fully enjoy their time on the beach. So we say that a private beach is not a rival good. Now, I say to some point, because of course, once it gets too crowded, then it can start getting annoying and detracting from your experience. But before that point, it's not a rival good. And finally, clean air. Clean air is not a rival good because it doesn't have this ability to be used up. If I breathe clean air, that doesn't de diminish the amount of clean air that's available for you. Now. Yes, there are exceptions. If we're in a hermetically sealed room, then that uh, could uh, diminish it. 
And even if we're not in a hermetically, uh, hermetically sealed room, but if we're in a room with many, many, many other people, sometimes actually the air quality can go down. But certainly if you're out of doors, uh, clean air is not diminishable. It's not rival. So we say that a, a good is private if it's both exclusive and rival. We say that a pure public good is neither exclusive nor rival. Uh, so, so bread is a private good. And clean air is a pure public good. Sometimes we leave out the word pure and just say public good. Uh, groundwater in the 1700s in the private beach have some characteristics of a private good and some characteristics of a public good. It's not entirely clear how to describe them. One way to say that is that they're public goods but not pure public goods. Another way to say that is that they're a mixture between private and public goods, that they have some characteristics of one and some characteristics of another. Uh, perhaps the most precise way of explaining these intermediate cases is to describe exactly which characteristic it has, which characteristics it has. Like, the groundwater is not exclusive, but it is rival. And private beach is exclusive, but it's not rival. So that'd be another way to do it. All right, with that, we have finished with chapter five. So in the next video, we're going to be starting chapter six.